Hello all, this video is a kind of continuation of my last, a part 2 if you like, where I'll be looking at the rest of the tools Banggood sent me. All the Vico brand tools to the left of the T-square, including the T-square itself. And, like the last video, the tools I'll review here I'll be giving away, all of them to one lucky winner. Details of how to enter I'll cover at the end of the video. You'll also find those details in the description below, along with all the relevant links. Before we get to the review, I'd just like to say congratulations to the winner of the last giveaway, Tim at Walk-In Toolbox. Well done mate and I hope you like the clamps. So let's get to it. This is a two-piece corner clamp set. In the box are four star knobs, two solid aluminium CNC'd corner clamping squares, four solid aluminium clamping feet, some washers and four steel L-shaped bars. The clamping squares are nicely machined with tactile eased over edges. They also feature a lip around the top edge, which I like the idea of. To assemble the clamping feet, poke the threaded end of the steel bar through the foot, add a washer, then screw on the star knob. Bada boom. The idea is pretty simple and far from original, but the L part of the steel bar hooks the clamping square while the aluminium foot grips the workpiece, all held fast by the star knob. As you can see, there's three sides to the clamping square, so it's possible to clamp a 45 degree angle as well as a 90. I've done some 45 degree cuts on these three pieces of oak trim scraps to see what they're like in action. As someone who clamps up an awful lot of corners and angled pieces, one immediate bonus that strikes me is the lip on the top of the clamping square. Sometimes as you build up pressure on a more typical L-shaped clamping square, it can start to go walkabout a bit, lean one way or the other if you know what I mean. The lip on these keeps things nicely in order. As is usual, before fully tightening down, you'll need to check alignment of your connecting pieces. When happy, cinch it down. With both sides clamp, I have to say this holds really nicely. These scraps were varnished at some point, and where I've cut, obviously I've exposed fresh wood, but I hope it comes through in these close-ups. The joints are really good. These clamping squares not only, as you'd expect, keep the corners square, but also keep the work flat or in line thanks to the lip. I like that. They hold really well too really feels like I can shake this three quarter frame about and it stays solid. Now as the hole in the foot is about one mil larger than the diameter of the bar, after force has been applied and you back off the star knob to remove it, you may find the feet have jammed to the bar a little like mine did. Little love tap with a no job too small multi tool and we're free as a bird. Another thing to note is, although I far from over tighten these, the feet did leave a mark on the wood exaggerated by the varnish finish, but there nonetheless. The edges of the clamping feet aren't nicely eased over like those on the squares themselves. I wouldn't say the edges are sharp, but certainly crisp edges. As such, they could do with a rubber pad on them or a little sacrificial slither of wood between them and the workpiece. I have to do that with a lot of my clamping, so it's hardly a deal breaker, but something to be aware of. Overall though, I like these, quite a lot as it happens. It'd pay to invest in two sets, I think, so you have four clamps if you do frames or cabinets, but what they do, they do very well. Feels and functions like a quality tool, and currently is £29.72 on Banggood, which, for what it is, is great value. I should mention that it looks to me as though your maximum stock width would be around 45mm between a square and clamping feet. Also, the centre scales you see marked around the edge, at least in terms of it functioning as a corner clamp, relate to very little, but there they are regardless. Like everything in this video, another Vico brand item, and it's clamps again. This time a pair of T-Track hold downs. In the box are two hold down bars, nice squishy rubber feet each end, two star knobs, two threaded bars and mitre track sized T-nuts to match, and two T-Track bolts with an oval head. Pretty cool that two fixing options are supplied. Easy enough to assemble, select your bolt option, poke it through the hole in the clamping bar, then screw on the star knob. So the sliding T-nuts provided are, as I say, for the standard mitre track, which has a 19mm slot, which would be, what, 3 quarter inch to our American friends? Happens to be the same size stuff my router table and table saw fences slide in, so ideal for a quick clamping demo. Either end of the bar can be used to clamp, depending on situation, I guess. I quite like the short end, really feels like it bites down. Very sure-footed hold-down clamping system. If you had a bench with myriad T-tracks or mitre tracks, a pair of these would be a must, I reckon. On my sliding carriage for my table saw, I have a piece of Incra mitre track for my mitre gauge. I've quite often used my old hold downs of this type to hold work fast for crucial cuts. Effective for large pieces of work too, making sure it stays fast to the mitre fence as you cut. 
particularly handy on large angled cuts. The other fixing bolt with the overland, despite numerous tracks and slots I have around the shop, the only one it fit was on top of my table saw fence, but being steel, if I were to keep these, I'd do like I did with my original pair and grind the head down to fit my slot 6 alley profile. You could do the same for whatever track or slot you had I guess. I've mentioned the original ones I bought from Banggood a couple of times and here they are. Had them about two years. Work the same way as these Vico ones but I have to say the Vico have a lot more heft to them. In fact you can feel they're a satisfying lump as soon as you remove them from the box. My originals came with much the same fixing options though as a hold down they're only single ended. They've served me well but the Vico bar makes it a better buy I think. These sell for £12.63 currently, which again, makes them a bit of a steal. A simple but decent clamp set. In this box is a promising looking square. These are sold in both metric and imperial versions, and for reasons only known to them, Banggood sent me the imperial version. I mean... Anyway, first impressions are okay. It's constructed around a CNC'd one-piece rule and stock, with the cheeks of the stock attached via four hex machine screws. Outside edge, zero is right at the bottom of the rule, extending up to 12 inch. The inside edge, zero is at the stock. Looks pretty well put together, with all three pieces nice and flat on the back of the stock, so it can stand up on its own. I really like the size of the stock on this square. I've complained in previous reviews about squares always coming with very small stocks. A longer one gives you a better reference edge. A slightly disconcerting thing about this square is it's really lightweight. I mean a featherweight. It's all aluminium, but even for Ali, it feels light. Initial check, and it does look like it's nice and square though. Let's do a couple of lines with it. Yeah, I do like this larger stock. Gives some confidence when you position it. Aided, of course, by the little stock rest, which we've come to expect as normal these days. Doing a rule flip on the outside edge looks grand. as does that for the inside edge. As I mentioned, outside rule edge starts at zero to the back of the stock, inside edge zero to the inside of the stock. On the rule, on this imperial version, there are pencil holes for every 1 16th inch increment. These will be one mil increments on the metric version, and the hole size is one millimeter. Using it to mark an inch from the edge, again, the stock feels nice and stable on the edge of the board. The only tape I have with any Imperial markings these days is my old Festool BMI one. Hope it shows clearly on the close-up, but that looks spot on one inch. It's a nice looking square and functions well in my brief tests here. Given its lightweight though, I can confidently say this is not a square for the job site. This is perhaps best at home in an organised methodical workshop where every tool has its place. Despite being solid alley, the rule is quite thin and not up to taking a knock. Like alley squares and rules in general, I wouldn't recommend knife marking either, pen and pencil only. Despite arriving in a box, the rule appears to have suffered some rigours of transport too. Doesn't sit quite flat, didn't affect its performance at all in this instance, but a rule this thin and lightweight, it's going to be a lottery as to whether yours would arrive flat I think. Shame because it's otherwise a very nice square, and at £20.33 currently, it is tempting, I don't know. Lastly then is this T-square. Arrives dismantled, so in the box is the rule, the stock, four hex machine screws, and an Allen to bring it all together like gravy on a Sunday lunch. Oh, and a, uh, kind of pen? So the rule. These are sold in metric only and available in 3, 4, 5, 6 and 760ml versions. It's the 500 I have here. Zero starts at the inside of the stock, each side of the rule and in the centre channel of the rule are 1mm marking holes at every 1mm increment. Unlike the last square, the rule here feels beast. Very nice aluminium construction and weight to it. The stock, again alley, is a scooped out strip back affair. There's a channel in the stock to seat the rule, and it also has a central pin to locate the rule. Both pieces have clearly been machined to very good tolerances as they nest together perfectly. So well in fact, the stock will stay attached with no screws. That's all very well of course, as long as they're square when mated, so let's see. I'll use the pen they sent me to mark with. What is the deal here? I mean alright, 
An outer casing for the pen isn't strictly needed, but someone that accounts has clearly got short arms and deep pockets, know what I mean? After drawing a line, just checking each side of the rule that each side is as should be. I know this square isn't as long as the T, but I don't have a 500mm square. Well, I have a Wolfcraft one, which I trust as much as I trust a dog alone with a bag of kibbles. This will suffice, and it looks decent. Going over the line again with the square looks a perfect overlay. This board was cut square too, so I can check from the top edge, and again, it looks good. I've done some more lines with the T-square, and doing a couple of mirror lines with the standard square, nice and parallel. Zoomed in like this, you can see the darker line on the right is the original line that was overlaid. Perfect. Checking with another square, it just seats perfectly, both sides. I've dug out my Rutland straight edge here, I used to check my planar thicknesser. The rule sits lovely and flat against it, as do the edges. One last test then, I've got the pen-ish in the 100mm marking hole. Think you'll agree that looks peachy. Again like the last square, this has an aluminium rule, so isn't for knife marking, but the nicely tapered edges do make for decent line marking with a pen or pencil. The profile of the rule, even at this length, makes it very stiff, just a very nicely constructed and machined tool. I can't really pick a fault with it. I would maybe caution that if buying a 760mm version, even with this hefty rule construction, whether it would arrive flat every time, who could say? 500mm and below, I reckon this is a really good investment. Currently you're looking at £15 for the smallest 300mm version, £21 for this 500mm and up to around £30 for the 760mm version. I'm so impressed with the rule that, even if the stock was complete pants, it'd still be a nice layout rule to have at these prices. Of the few I've tried off Banggood, this is the best T-square they've offered yet, I think. So an all-round decent haul there, and I'm going to be giving them all away. Like the last giveaway, this competition is open to UK mainland residents only, so sorry if that rules out viewers from the Isles or overseas. To enter, you'll need to follow me on Instagram. This gives a discreet means for me to contact the winner and for them to supply a postage address. To be in with a chance of winning, under the relevant Instagram post, I want you to tell me briefly what is the dumbest thing you've done on a job site or in the workshop. It could be something dumb you've seen someone else do. Maybe a silly, why do I keep doing that habit? Let's try and keep it clean, woodworking or trade related, and hopefully share a chuckle along the way. As an example of what I'm after, and it's something I video evidence of, when I'm applying finish, I'll usually make myself a nice cup of tea. It'll often be my first sawdust-free cup of the week. All too often, mind, with tea and finish on the bench, I find I've dipped my application brush in the tea. It's an embarrassingly frequent occurrence. Luckily, I've not applied any tea to any of my work yet, though. So there you go, a mild example of something dumb I do. I've no doubt some of you will have more amusing, smooth-brained examples than that. Let's hear them. Embarrass yourself or someone else, and you could win all the tools I've reviewed here. Have several goes if you want as well. Closing date for entries is Friday the 12th of November 21, with the winner announced on Saturday the 13th. If you're interested in any of these tools and want to have a look for yourself, all the links will be in the description below, as will the link to the competition Instagram post. Good luck if you enter, and as always, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.